like, you know, um, describe what a bird is and give two examples. Sometimes people forget all about the describe what a bird is and simply give two examples. So, you know, right now, Robin and Cardinal. Well, you didn't answer the whole question. You didn't do the first part and describe what a bird is. So be sure if I say define this or describe this or why would you do this and give an example of when you would do it. Be sure you do both, that you describe and give an example. That's a, a very common thing I notice in grading things is people will like skimp on one part of it or the other. Or the reverse, they'll read the first part of it, answer it without realizing that there's more to the question. So make sure your answer is complete and covers the whole question. Um, I'm, I'm not here to count words, so you need to completely answer the question. Um, I would guess in most cases, you know, three, four, five good sentences probably would cover it. All right. Um, but make sure you've completely answered it. If it takes more to answer it, then, then do it. If, if you can somehow come up with a good answer in less, then, then good for you. So that's the concept portion. There'll be about five of these. There'll then be an OO design exercise, similar to the kinds of things that we did in class. Um, if you remember, what did we do? We did like an electronic store, all right? And there'll be a similar example to that, all right? Um, this is one especially that I'm not trying to throw you like a curveball or do something deliberately confusing. In other words, if you look at something and it kind of looks like that's an example of a, a superclass and a subclass, that's probably what I'm getting at. And so put it down there. You know, and, and my, you know, my job is so that you can recognize if you see, read a narrative, a subclass and superclass. All right. But you'll end up drawing a class diagram. And I want the class diagram to be like the class diagrams that we've talked about in lecture and that we um, uh, the, sort of the standard that we've covered in the book. And those are something like this. Really only a handful of symbols. The rectangles represent classes. A line between two rectangles simply means that there is some sort of association between the two. Not an inheritance, not a composition, not a uh, uh, an interface, but something like there might be a sales rep and an order class may have some relationship to each other. All right, not an example of inheritance or interface or anything like that, but yeah, an, an order, you know, sort of a has a relationship, I suppose. Inheritance is shown like this. Composition is shown like this, and composition is where you have this being made up of that. You know, an automobile is made up of a bunch of parts. An order is made up of a bunch of line items, and so on. A department is made up of a bunch of employees. And finally, interfaces are represented by a dashed line. This is one, in my opinion, you're probably better off hand drawing it than trying to wrestle with word to get the exact right symbol and, and whatever. All right. As long as it's legible, you know, it, it can be handwritten, um, this, this diagram. Um, so were I doing this, I wouldn't, you know, every, you know, every time I use Word or, or any kind of word processing application, there's always like, I want to go put an arrow between here and here, and for some reason it won't go right there. You know, I end up driving myself crazy, or I can make a, I can make a two-headed arrow, but not a one-headed arrow. You know, you just don't want to deal with that, right? You have bigger fish to fry, uh, so to speak. So therefore, I would suggest hand drawing them, all right? Um, but you'll come up with this. And again, my aim isn't to make it complicated. My aim is to give a, describe a scenario that, you know, and, and, and um, do it. Now, you won't have to necessarily um, 
you don't have to do anything more than what I described. So if I, if, I say, if I don't say that you need to define the methods, you don't need to worry about defining methods or attributes. Maybe you're just drawing the class structure. All right? So, so be, be really sure when you read it, you know, don't spin your wheels trying to do more than you are asked to do. Really, I, I guess that applies for, for all of this, uh, all of this exam. You know, just do what, you're, what you need to do. I may ask you to, to define if a class is abstract or not, all right? And you can just do that with some sort of notation. You could put, for example, class 1 and then somehow note that it's abstract. And that will be adequate for what we're doing. All right. Here's a list of things you may be asked to include in your diagram, but don't as assume that you have to. All right? Inheritance structure, interfaces, implementation of interfaces, and so on down the line. I want you to be sure that you can identify them. So this isn't like, what is it, Sudo Sudoku, Sudoku? where you have to like fit one of each number in a box. You don't have to say, well, gee, I haven't figured out the interface in this problem. There might not be an interface in it, all right? So don't assume that all these things are in there and it's your job to spot them and to pick them out and to point them out, all right? The problem is what it is and just be sure you answer it. You also don't have to worry about other stuff other than what is stated in the problem, you know? Um, for example, if it's a library and I talk about different kinds of books they have, like the one example we had in class, you don't have to say, well, also there's librarians and also there's patrons and also there's branches of libraries. If the problem doesn't say it, you don't have to worry about it. All right? It's assumed that these are sort of abstractions of reality, that these are not whole, complete problems. All right? Last part is a programming part, and in my mind, we've covered the OO design and the concepts in the first two parts. So this is by and large straight coding, all right? Which means I will tell you the classes to create. I will tell you the attributes that those classes should have. I will tell you the methods that those classes should have, and I will describe how your test code should work, all right? I won't write it in Java, though. I'll just write it in words. Your job, then, is to implement that in Java. You'll be surprised how many people, and I guess I shouldn't criticize someone for being ambitious, but like they'll take this and they'll like, have three other classes and this and that. And the other. It's like, just do what I ask, okay? This is just meant to be a very straightforward programming example so that, yeah, you need a method to do this. That will show that you know how to create a method in Java. You need to pass this kind of argument. That will show you know how to create that and pass that kind of argument, all right? So it's very uh, focused on, on doing what I want you to do, and you don't really have to worry about anything else. This isn't an app that we're going to put up on the App Store, all right? So it doesn't have to be polished and complete and all that. It just needs to do what it needs to do. Uh, again, but it does need to do that, all right? And I guess I could say that for any uh, of the tests, that, that people... Uh, in grading, uh, the observation is people will either like take it way too far or not take it far enough. You just have to answer the question completely. You just have to do what's described. Don't do any less, and there's really no benefit for doing any more as well. If anything, that will be liable to distract you or, or whatever. All right. Pretty much anything we have done in class programming wise or has been on assignments is fair game. You know. If you think of it really, you know, what is there? There are um, you know, there there's there's uh, there's sequential statements, there are uh, if statements, there are loops, there are functions, there are classes, uh, constructor any of that stuff is fair game as far as this goes. But again, I will tell you exactly what to create, all right? And, and you can go then and create that. All right. 
that's sort of an overview of the three parts. Each one of those, in my mind, uh, answers a uh, different set of questions about how much of this material you picked up. There's the, sort of the basic concepts, there's a bit on design, and there's a bit on just the nuts and bolts, can you write an if statement, can you write a function, that sort of thing. Any questions about the overall structure before we go on to looking at each part in more detail? Um, there will definitely be a drop box for the code, okay? The other two parts are really up to you. If you want to handwritten them, that's, write them, that's fine. If you want to do them in Word, that's fine too. It, it's really, those other two parts are up to you. Uh, the, the programming part I want you to upload. All right, upload uh, to the drop box. The, the, the diagram, I would suggest that you handwrite it and just give it to me. Um, but again, you know, you're welcome to do that if you're, maybe you're a Visio whiz or something, or, or, you know, you know, word art up, down, and sideways, whatever, you know, more power to you, all right? But yeah, it's pretty much up to you, except for the fact that I do want you to upload the code. Other questions about the general form of it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, a, that's an excellent point. That's an excellent point. Um, you know, this is, um, you know, I, I, how do I want to say this? I don't like to encourage people to sort of game the test, you know, and, and do that. But that is a valuable skill of allocating your time, you know. Look at it, you know, each three parts are equal, all right, as far as point values go. Um, so maybe a default stance would be that you divide up your time in thirds for those. And if you notice you're getting close to your allocation for the written, maybe you speed it up a little bit. I would say, if I were taking this, I would probably not necessarily divide it in equals, but give my, myself a little bit of extra time on the programming part. You know, <laughs> the, the written part, I'm not going to um, take off if you get the wrong tense of verb with your noun, all right, you know, uh, if you wanted to say something are, you know, constructors are, and you say constructors is, I'm not going to take off for that. The compiler will take off for that, though, all right, in the written part. So therefore, uh, were I doing this, I would try to allocate a little more time for the programming part, all right. But yeah, it's important, and I do give it out all in, all in advance to help you. You know, that's the, an excellent point, a good idea. Look at it, think in your head, maybe there's a part that you're, you think you're more or less comfortable for, you know, you know your own skills, and, and you could decide from there how you want to allocate your time. Other questions? All right, let's look at the parts in more detail. Here are the general concepts. Um, I have my standard disclaimer that, you know, my legal team tells me to put on top of these things. You're responsible for everything in the class, the text, the lectures, and lab. But it's not my job to trick you, you know. If I was really a mean person, I just wouldn't do a review, right? I just wouldn't do a study guide. I, 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 I don't think there's too many people that are that twisted that would go out of their way to make a study guide that has wrong information on it to trick you into studying something else. There might be a few, but, there, you know, I'm not one of those. All right. So it's my intent that I covered everything on this. But again, you really are, strictly speaking, responsible for everything. I just do that to avoid arguments like, well, it doesn't really say that you'd have to write a two-argument constructor. Uh, OK, well, yeah, fair enough. It doesn't say that. But you know, that's sort of covered when you talk about objects and classes, you know, that sort of thing. All right. So here's the general concepts, objects and classes, attributes and methods, public, protected, and private, the notion of encapsulation, the notion of primitives versus object references, inheritance, interfaces, polymorphism, casting, method overlowing, and the Java API. Questions on any of those topics? Protected, okay. Public, protected, and private, all right. 
Public, we know what that is, right? That means that everyone can access it. Private, we know what that is. That is that only um, objects of that class, you know, you can only access your own attributes. All right, it's only available within the object, the instance variables. What are protected then? Protected are like private, except a subclass can also uh, uh, access the, the method, uh, the attribute. So, let me see if I can find a better definition of that. Public, all right, within a class you can access it. Within a package you can access it. Within a subclass you can access it, and anyone in the world can access it. <clears throat> Protected, anyone within the class and package and subclass can access it. I didn't realize the package was a factor as well. No modifier the default is Yes to the class, yes to the package, no to the subclass, no to the world. And finally, private is only that class. We can kind of forget about this package part right now. Likewise, we can talk about no modifier, or we can forget about no modifier. And so the bottom line on this is that if you declare a, a, method, or a, a method or an attribute private, then in this case, where you have a superclass and a subclass, this cannot access private attributes or variables in the superclass. It, however, can access protect. For the purpose of this class, that's really the, the important part uh, at this point, is that if you have a subclass, can access the private of the superclass, can access the protected of the superclass. For the most part, um, if I didn't have a compelling reason for it, I would make them protected. All right, if, you know, and that way the, the, the subclass can also do it, unless I had a pretty good reason why I didn't think I would want the subclass to, to manipulate that attribute. Other questions? That back up. Other questions? Going once. One thing I will say, in addition to simply knowing what these are, know the whys of it. So don't just know what method overloading is, but know why you would do that. Don't just understand what public, protected, and private mean. Know why you would make something public or private or protected and know the advantages, what's good about polymorphism. Question. Uh, what about it? What it is or what? Well, um, let's think of an example of that. Let's see. OK. 
example of polymorphism. Well, we talked about a library in one example, right? And we said something, okay. We just designed the library, right? We didn't actually write any code for it. Is that correct? That's my recollection of it. All right. Library, all right? Let, let's make a real simple um, set of classes for um, libraries, all right? And we'll say that the, at the library, there are books and there are DVDs, all right? The books, um, you can take out for 28 days, and the late fee is uh, a nickel a day. And DVDs, you can take out for seven days, and the late fee is a um, dollar a day, all right? So, we could do something like this, all right? Do keep in mind, even with the design example uh, uh, on this exam, that, that, you know, your mileage may vary. You're liable to do things a little bit differently. But let's go and let's make some of the classes that, that I just described, and, and we'll go through an example, and we'll talk about how polymorphism works in this particular example. All right, so our class diagram, if I'm going to draw, draw it, will be like this. I'll say there's an item. And that item has two subclasses, book and DVD. All right. We're going to make this an abstract class. Why? Because you don't take an item out of a library. You know, that's not the best way, that's not a complete way of describing what you take out of the library. Just like you don't have an animal for a pet. You do in a way, but that's not the best, most complete way to describe it. You have a dog or a cat or a lizard or whatever. All right, so we're going to make that an abstract class. And we're going to make a couple of abstract methods on here. Abstract method one being um, get days out. How long you can have the item for and get daily fine, how much you charge per day late. Okay? So there's two, and these are also going to be abstract methods. <clears throat> what does abstract uh, class mean? It means you can instantiate it. What does an abstract method mean? It means that I'm not going to have any code on this level for it. All right? And that means that any class, though, that inherits from this, Provided it itself is an abstract class, it's going to have to implement it. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put in here get days out. That's going to return a value of 28. And just for simplicity, I'm just going to hard code that. It's going to return a 28. And get fine, daily fine. And this guy is going to return a nickel. This one is going to uh, have get days out, and it will return a 7, and get daily fine, and it will return a 1 for a dollar a day. All right, so let's go and let's create these real quick.
Natal. I'm gonna Google this real quick to make sure I have the sequence of this right. I do confess to public ab uh, public abstract class. All right. So, there's our abstract class. Let's save that. And these are going to be very simple methods. Maybe a more realistic example would look at the kind of book that it is. Maybe new releases um, you get for a shorter period of time than, than a um, regular libra general library book. So I made my two classes with their methods. Now I'm going to go in and write a test class just to test these before we start getting into the nuts and bolts of polymorphism. I want to make sure these work first. So And I'll just output the fine. I won't output the number of days, but we could we could just as well do that. All right, let's test this and make sure that this part works. Again, practicing what I'm preaching here. Not trying to do everything all at once, but just do a bit at a time. Oh, 
All right. That's the DVD. I also forgot to say that it extends item. So let's go and change the DVD and book. All right, so got a couple semicolons. Not bad for the first day back after spring break. All right. So we get that the book finds a nickel a day and the DVD finds a dollar. Now, how to treat this polymorphically, all right? Polymorphically means that uh, any item, and it can either be an in, in the case of an interface or it can be in the case of a superclass, can take many forms. In other words, an item can take the form of a DVD, an item can take the form of a book. So, let's say I had a list of items. I had uh, an array list of items. All right. In fact, it's a good practice of other coding things. Let's go and make an array list in our test class. What am I doing here? I'm importing Java Util array list. What does that do? Allows me to it will find an array list without me having to type in Java Util array list. All right. So I can say can add to that array list. book and I can add to that array list the DVD. Now I can loop through that array list which I know has uh, is comprised of a list of items. So I can say for and I equals zero do this as long as i is less than a dot size. i plus plus.
All right. So what am I doing? I created an array list. I created a variable for the item that I'm going to pluck out of that array list. I create my book and DVD. I add my book and DVD to the array list. I then loop through all the members of the array list, start the, 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 the counter at zero, loop as long as i is less than the size, i plus plus. I then grab the first item off the list. The second time through loop, I'll grab the second item and so on. I cast it as an item. I'm going to treat it as an item. All right. I know that because I stack the deck. I only put, I'm only putting items on this list. Um, and then I ask, hey, okay, what is the fine of this? So where does polymorphism come into this? Polymorphism is, in one case, I'm going to ask the item, what is your fine? And it will give me the fine for a book. In another case, I'm going to ask what the fine is, and it's going to give me the fine for a DVD. So that one object, that object X, I've defined it as an item object, yet it can take many forms. All right? And when I call the method on it, it will give me the method for the proper form for what that object really is. All right? So the first item is going to be a book, so it's going to call the getFind function on the book. Uh, class, and it'll give me a nickel. The second one is a DVD, so it'll give me the fine for a DVD. So that's, again, the idea of that. That variable x can take many forms. All right? All right? And sure enough, it gives me first the, the nickel and then the dollar. So that x, which is an item object, is taking on many forms. And those forms retain their distinctiveness of behavior. All right? A book has a different way of calculating the fine than a DVD does. And even though both of these are being stored or pointed to by an item reference, it gets the right method for the kind of object that it really is, for the form that that item object really is. Yes? How to tell what type of item I have? Okay, the question is, is, how can I tell what object I'm dealing with? Am I dealing with a book or a DVD? There is the instance of operator that we looked at last time. And what was the other example we used last time? Was that last time or the time before? Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Um, I'm almost positive the one example we did last time, we looked at that.
Now, here's a catch. This is how you do it. We can say instance of, use the instance of operator, or we can say is assignable from in that manner. Now, here's the catch here, though. You really don't want to do this very often. You want to write good objects that can be used polymorphically, then you really don't care what kind of object it is. You're going to call that method, and it will get the proper value for that uh, method. In other words, I wouldn't, what I wouldn't want to do is do something like this. I wouldn't want to have a method on the book that said get book fine, a method on the DV that says, DVD that says get DVD fine, and then have logic to say if instance of book, get book fine, otherwise get DVD fine. I wouldn't want to do that or, or cast it as, as the one or the other. I wouldn't want to do that. What I would want to instead is I would want to have a polymorphic function, get daily fine or get fine then it really doesn't matter what type it is, all right? But if you do absolutely need to know what type it is, then, then these are the ways of doing it. I think a lot of people coming from non-object-oriented backgrounds want to do this kind of coding too much, where you go and say, well, if it's this kind of class, then do this, otherwise. And again, in the, the more object-oriented design mentality is no, there's just different ways of calculating the fine. Those aren't separate methods. They're one method that is going to be on this object or on this class that all the subclasses then will have their own version of it and it'll, it'll be handled polymorphically. So that is polymorphism in a nutshell. The fact that that item class, that item reference, uh, X, could take many forms. In one, in one case it was a book, in another case it was a DVD, and you get the right value or you get the right version of the function that's, that, that really reflects what the object truly is. Other questions? I know we kind of went on a long detour to answer that question, so did I, did I answer the polymorphic part of it adequately? I, uh, as I'm wrapping this up, I'm thinking, you know, I may have went into a couple of diversions that kind of muddied the water, and I hope that wasn't the case. Uh, all right, other questions? You certainly can ask me questions between now and the midterm. In fact, even during the midterm, you're welcome to ask me questions if you don't understand what I mean by something or whatever. And, and I will answer to the degree that I think is fair. All right? And uh, in many cases, I might say the answer out loud so everyone in the class can, can hear it, you know, so everyone can benefit from hearing that. But, you know, um, don't think that you can't ask any questions. You know, feel free to ask, and, and I will either decline to answer or give you an indirect answer or whatever, depending on the specific question that you ask. Other questions, comments? All right, see you up in lab. Um. There, there is not an assignment due. Yeah, I think one's due today, right? Or was that due last week? Or the week before spring break? Okay. I, I guess I messed up then. I guess, I guess there should have been one due today then. Oh well. <laughs> I think I think I was probably thinking that that we would use this time to review and wrap up and then we'll pick up on the assignment next time. And if anyone needed to catch up with any late assignments or whatever, they could they could do that. All right. Yes. Other questions? Yes. Right. Well, well, um, what I mean would be something like this. The question about what do I mean by implementation of interface. In other words, for the design portion. 
if I were to say um, that um, I'm keeping track of a lot of different flying things, you know, birds, airplanes, helicopters, and so on. The interface would be a flying thing, and the implementation of it would be bird, plane, Superman. Because those implement the specific interface. So that's what I mean by implementation, all right, the classes that implement the interface. Right. Other questions? Yes? Primitive is, is uh, the handful of very basic uh, data types that are not at all class, uh, classes. So like, for example, um, int, double, boolean, Date. There might be a half character, I think, char. There might be two or three other ones. But the, the bigger impl implication other than what they are is how their uh, variables are treated differently than, than, a, than a, uh, an object reference. Other questions? Okay. <laughs>